There are many reasons why people do intermittent fasting, starting from weight loss and ending with convenience. Although restricting your eating window to a certain time frame makes it easier to create a caloric deficit, using IF for fat loss is just the superficial benefit. The best thing about intermittent fasting is autophagy. I did some research and in this video I'm going to tell you what I learned about autophagy and how you can benefit from it while doing intermittent fasting. Autophagy translates from the ancient Greek word autophagus which means self-digestion or devouring. Autophagy is a natural process by which our cells dissemble and remove their dysfunctional components. It's basically the recycling of cellular waste and taking out the trash. Autophagy puts you into a catabolic state, which means that you're breaking down your own tissue, as opposed to being anabolic, which is about building new tissue. There are a ton of benefits to autophagy. Reduced inflammation, improved immune system, it slows down the aging process, it's gonna eat up cancerous and tumor cells, it kills infections and viruses. Inability to cause autophagy makes rats less active, more obese, have higher cholesterol and impaired brain function. So it's an essential mechanism for healthy cell metabolism. But how does autophagy work? When you trigger autophagy, you allow your healthy cells to hunt out dead or diseased cells and then eat them. This involves forming a double membrane around the cell that's going to be eaten, called an autophagosome. The autophagosome then dissolves the sick cell or the toxic protein and creates energy. But what regulates autophagy? The main inhibitors of autophagy are two protein kinases called mTOR and AMPK. mTOR or mammalian target of rapamycin is responsible for cellular growth, protein synthesis and anabolism. It promotes the activation of insulin receptors and will make the body build new tissue. AMPK or AMP activated protein kinase is a fuel sensor that's involved with energy balance. The reason why intermittent fasting causes autophagy has to do with caloric deprivation. Nutrient starvation allows unneeded proteins to be broken down and recycled into amino acids that are essential for survival. Research has shown that consuming fewer calories prolongs your lifespan. However, to get these lifespan expanding benefits of caloric restriction, you need autophagy. In one study on mice and flies, they found out that if you inhibited autophagy but still fed the animals fewer calories, they didn't live longer. But the ones who were proficient at causing autophagy did live longer. This is a very important point. It means that just going on a weight loss diet while not allowing autophagy to do its work will actually be bad for your health and longevity overall. Long-term caloric restriction leads to micronutrient deficiencies, malnutrition and more oxidative stress. The reason why you get kicked out of autophagy while still eating fewer calories has to do with eating too frequently. If you consume protein or carbohydrates, then you're already triggering mTOR. Even as few as 50 calories or just 2 grams of leucine will shift you from a fasted state into a fed one and it's gonna suppress autophagy. You would be better off by consuming no calories at all and doing intermittent fasting rather than breaking your fast with a small amount of calories and stopping autophagy. Don't add milk to your coffee in the morning even if you skip breakfast because it's gonna do you more harm and don't start snacking during the day either. That's the reason why I believe everyone should practice intermittent fasting at least in some shape or form. If not daily, then at least periodically throughout the week. Imagine if you're eating breakfast, lunch and dinner. You stop eating at 8pm, you fast throughout the night and you consume your first bit of calories at 8am again. There's a 12 hour space between your meals, but it takes about 6 to 8 hours for your body to digest the food that you've eaten and then enter a fasted state. You really only start fasting in the middle of the night and when it's breakfast time, you've fasted only for about about 6 hours, which is definitely not enough time for autophagy to begin its work. And it practically means that you're in a fed state 24-7. When you're in a fed state, autophagy gets suppressed because of mTOR and insulin. When you suppress mTOR and insulin, then autophagy can begin to rise. 
It's the yin and yang of catabolism and anabolism. How long does it take to trigger autophagy? I tried to do some research, but it seems that there is no clear answer to this. Autophagy itself happens in varying degrees in varying tissues. Generally speaking, as soon as your blood sugar levels are low and you keep your mTOR and insulin low as well, then you'll begin to show some signs of autophagy. You would have to be in a semi-catotic state with depleted glycogen stores to let these processes take effect. And usually this happens within 16 to 24 hours. However, this is a very mild response. Autophagy begins to really ramp up only after the first 36 and 48 hours. So to get the really good health benefits of autophagy, you'd have to fast for about 3 to 5 days. We must with that being said, I believe that it's not optimal to be only eating after every 5 days because you wouldn't be able to sustain other healthy functions like micronutrients and exercise. Fasting itself won't make you lose muscle because of increased growth hormone and ketone body production. Autophagy itself is actually needed for maintaining your muscle mass, like those rats in the other study. It also means that if you're constantly feeding yourself, then you're becoming more susceptible for these occasional catabolic states that's going to wreak havoc to your lean body mass. Because your body doesn't know how to use its own fat for fuel. And once you run out of glucose inside your body, then it's gonna break down the muscle tissue. Here are a few ways of doing intermittent fasting for getting autophagy and improving your health. Fast for at least 16 hours every day to enter a fasted state. This allows your liver glycogen stores to get depleted and keeps you in a mild ketotic state most of the day. Keep your insulin and blood sugar levels low. If you consume carbs or protein, then you suppress autophagy because of mTOR and insulin. But if you're consuming more fats, then you're blunting the insulin response, which allows you to prolong the effects of fasting. It's still going to stop autophagy, but it's going to keep your body in a ketotic state. Ketosis has great anti-inflammatory and longevity boosting effects that can indirectly promote autophagy. Funny enough, a recent 2017 study found that rats who were fed more olive oil in addition to their regular diet had better memory scores and higher levels of autophagy compared to the ones who just ate their regular food. Don't eat too much protein or carbs, no matter what diet you're on, because it's gonna trigger mTOR. Both mTOR and insulin can accelerate aging and can promote cancer growth. However, it's not that black and white. mTOR also makes you build muscle, which can improve your health and longevity. You definitely don't want to be in an anabolic state all day, every day, because it will definitely make you die sooner. Every day. That's why I believe this feasting and fasting cycle is optimal for getting the best of both worlds. You fast to get the life enhancing benefits of fasting and when you do eat, you do it enough to get enough recovery and muscle growth. Exercise can also stimulate autophagy. However, you would have to do it in a fat burning state when you're not just burning off your glycogen stores. To do that, you would either have to restrict your carbohydrate intake or exercise on a fasted state. Doing cardio on an empty stomach will put you into ketosis faster and increases your fat oxidation. You should also have extended fasts for maybe 3 to 5 days a few times per year. It should actually be mandatory if you want to get any significant benefits from autophagy. 36 hours should be the minimum if you want to clean your body and promote longevity. Oh, you're having a bad day? Did you die? I myself have already done a 100 hour fast this January and a few 48 hour ones as well. But I'm going to plan on making another 3 to 5 day fast this fall. But did you die? So definitely subscribe because I'll make a video about it. And if you're interested in learning more about these similar strategies and tactics for doing this, then check out my free ebook Body Mind Empowerment Handbook. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay burning fat. Stay empowered.